day five of the September challenge. You've read the Bible and responded five days in a row. Hopefully, you're feeling a little momentum. It's becoming a habit. Let's continue that every single day next week as well. So we're in Philippians 1, 27 through 30. I'll show you what I did in my journal. So the idea of Paul, he says, let your life, let your manner of life, the, the way you live, let it be worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now that's an explosive statement. What he's saying is that if there is a scale, if on this side of the scale, the gospel of Jesus is on here. So think about how much that weighs, what Jesus did for you by living, dying, coming on a mission for you. The weight of that he says, if you put the way you live your life on the other side of the scale, they should match. In other words, the intensity of your life should match the gravity of the gospel. Just think about that. The, the way you love others today should be a reflection of the way God loved you. The way God loved you should be the way that you loved others. The way Jesus came on mission for you is the way you should go on mission for others. There should be a, a matching of weightiness. So Paul's telling the church, you should live your life in a way that matches the intensity of the gospel. And as my kids talked about this morning, Dad, there's no way we can do that. And that's actually true. But but the idea is that we should be striving to constantly live our lives in the way that Jesus lived for us. What does that look like? Paul says, stand firm, okay, in one spirit and in one mind. So he's talking about the church to be unified as they're standing for the faith, but also to strive side by side for the faith of the gospel. So it's supposed to be standing and striving. I love both of those imageries, the standing in the faith, but also striving for the faith. And it's in community. It's with other believers. So if you're in isolation, not connected to a church, uh, the idea is for you to get involved with some people, get involved with the church so you can strive side by side with those people uh, for the sake of the gospel. He says, not frightened by your opponents. And notice the opponents. They have destruction coming. You have salvation coming. That's why there's a difference between you. That's why they're offended by the things you're doing because you're loving and living in light of a new kingdom and you're proclaiming that the kingdom that they love and live for is actually going away. So your salvation is a sign of their destruction. And then he says, it's granted to you that you not only believe in Jesus, but also suffer for him because you're engaged in the battle. You're engaged in the same conflict that I am. So Paul's telling the church, hey, if you're going to be engaged in the gospel, there's going to be conflict. And the conflict, it's actually granted to us by God to suffer because often in our suffering is how we show the world how good Jesus is. So my application, the way I live should match the way Jesus lived and died for me. If I could do that today, I'll be doing well. If you could do that today, we would all be doing well. That the intensity of my life would match the weightiness of the gospel. That's kind of the big idea. And then and then secondly, I need to keep fighting the good fight of faith with a community of believers. I want to be connected to other believers, striving and standing with them for the sake of the gospel. So today, live your life in a way that is worthy, that weighs as much as the way Jesus lived and died for you.